Abbott, what time is it? It's time for the Abbott and Costello Show. We're on the air for ABC here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. It's the Abbott and Costello Show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood for your listening and laughing pleasure with chuckles with a carload and music by Matty Malnick. So hold on to your chairs, folks, for here they are, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. All right, all right, all right, Costello. All right, Costello. I like her if I never loved What's the idea? Uh, wait a minute. Oh. What's the idea coming in here singing? I'm going to sing on a program tonight. What do you know about music? You wouldn't know a bass from a soprano. Is that so? You wouldn't see me sliding in a second soprano, would you? <laughs> and besides, my new girl wants me to sing on the program. You've got a new girl? Yes, every night she knocks on my door, throws her arms around me, hugs and kisses me, and calls me Gregory Peck. She calls you Gregory Peck? Gregory Peck. Why didn't you tell her you're not... Gregory Peck, silly boy. <laughs> what does this girl do, Lou? She's a striptease dancer at the burlesque show. I wait for her every night outside the stage door. Does she meet you? No, but she waves to me from the patrol wagon as it goes by. <laughs> Saints. I used to chase girls like you, and I never got anywhere. And one day I decided life wasn't worth living. I tried to shoot myself. And somebody stopped me. Too bad. I tried to hang myself, and somebody stopped me. Too bad. I tried to drown myself, and somebody stopped me. Some people never know when to mind their own business. <laughs> well, all I have to say to you, Costello, is adios. Adios? Yes, that's goodbye in Spanish. Well, uh, Los Angeles traffic. Los, An Los Angeles traffic? That's goodbye in any language. Ah, oh, shit. Hey, wait a minute, boys. Here's a serious-looking fellow trying to get a word in edgewise. Let's see what he has to say. About this time. I've been choosing a man, choosing a man of distinction by the Boy Scouts of America. And my picture is going to be in all the magazines. What picture? There it is. It's a picture of me leaning up against my scoutmaster, drinking a glass of buttermilk. <laughs> you, must, you must be pretty popular with your Boy Scout troop. Yes, sir. I'm the only Boy Scout in California that's got a hot rod. Yeah, you don't even know what a hot rod is. Oh, yes, I do. A hot rod is a jalopy that smokes Mexican cigarettes. <laughs> running around with a bunch of kids at your age? There must be something wrong with you. What's the matter with you anyway? Can't figure it out, Abbott. I sleep good at night. I sleep good in the morning. But during the day, I just seem to twist and turn. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder nobody will associate with you. You haven't got a friend in the world. How can you say that, Abbott? Ah. I'm the most popular guy in my hometown. Every one of the 300,000 people in Patterson, New Jersey, love me. Wait a minute, Costello. 300,000? Patterson only has 140,000 people. When were you there last? Two years ago. Well, people have children, you know. <laughs> you please talk sense. What's that roll of paper you've got in your pocket? That's my Christmas shopping list, and you're right on the top. Oh, say, that's, that's wonderful. Uh, what are you going to get me, Lou? I'm going to get you a handful of nickels and dimes and put them in your mouth. 
What do you want to give me a handful of nickels and dimes to put in my mouth? I'd like to hear some change in your conversation. <laughs> Never mind. Who else is on your list? Well, there's my Uncle Mike. I don't know what to get him. Last year, I got him a smoking jacket. Did he like it? Oh, sure. Christmas morning, he stuffed it into his pipe. <laughs> Didn't it burn? Yeah, but not as good as tobacco. <laughs> I think I'll get my Aunt May one of those old man river girdles. What's an old man river girdle? It helps you tote that barge and lift that bale. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll either get that or I'll get a book of a volume by O. Henry. Oh, a volume? Yeah. Oh, oh, Henry only wrote short stories. How much can you write on a, on a wrapper off a candy bar? <laughs> what, what is Uncle Mike going to get Aunt May, Lou? I don't know. Last year he gave her a fur piece. He shot it under the house. Had a white stripe down its back. That was a skunk. Huh? That was a skunk. Why did Uncle Mike shoot it? After he shot it, he asked himself the same question. <laughs> wait, no, wait a minute now. After all, skunk is pretty expensive. If your Uncle Mike had to buy it, he would have had to sell his house to pay for it. After he shot it, he had to sell the house anyway. <laughs> <laughs> my, wife, my wife wants a mink coat for Christmas, but... Mink skins cost $40 a piece. Why don't you just buy her one skin and, and a sock stretcher? <laughs> that's, not, no, this is a, that's ridiculous. My wife's one of the most beautiful women in Hollywood. Every time I look at her, she reminds me of Jane Russell. Me too. Really? Mm -hmm. What my, makes her remind you of Jane Russell? She's got legs like Bob Waterfield. I... <laughs> My wife puts on an evening gown. She looks like she was poured in it. You're right, Abbott. She looks like she was poured in it and forgot to say when. <laughs> is, that so? is that so? My wife was a picture star a few years ago, you know. Her last picture was the Great Forest Fire. She was the siren. I saw that picture. She nearly fell off the truck three times. <laughs> Costello, my wife, is one of the most popular girls in this town. Why, I only want her on account of uh, my great romantic ability. You've got romantic ability? <laughs> Certainly. When I put my arms around a girl and kiss her, her eyes close and she faints dead away. Yeah, but I used to be able to do the same thing, only lately garlic doesn't agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell me, Costello, how's your romance coming with that rich girl from uh, Pasadena? Uh, she wasn't serious, Abbott. I found out it was nothing but puppy love on her part. When did she break the engagement? When she found out I wasn't a puppy. I... <laughs> Well, you should have, you should have, you should have hung on to her, Costello. Her family were very wealthy. Their home has 20 bathrooms. Their home has 20 bathrooms? That's right. No wonder they call them the filthy rich. <laughs> you know, she was a nice girl, Abbott, but there was only one thing wrong with her. She had a million dollar smile. Well, what's wrong with that? She'd only smile at guys that had a million dollars. <laughs> well, now that you've broken off with her... Why don't you make a play for my younger sister, Babe? Your sister, Babe? Mm -hmm. Don't tell me she's out here in California now. I'm sure, she's Ooh. always wanted to come out here to, to the West where men are men and women are women. Yes, out here in the West where men are men and women are women. And now your sister, Babe, has to come out here and confuse the whole thing. <laughs> Costello, my sister, Babe, may be fat, but remember, she's a slick chick. She's slick, all right. The last time I had a date with her, I'd been over to kiss her goodnight and her hair slid off. <laughs> Are you trying to insinuate that my sister babe is bald? I wouldn't say that, Abbott. She's got one of those new, sunny, tough hairdos. Sunny, tough hairdos? Yeah, it's sunny down the middle, and there's a tough on each side. <laughs> Costello, Mr. Costello. Now it's Abbott's nephew, folks. Now what do you want, Norman? Well, I'm on the committee for the Rose Bowl Parade, and we want you to ride on one of those big rose-covered floats on New Year's Day. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, but I've got to tell you something. There's one restriction. You can't tell any of the jokes you tell on the radio while you're riding on the float. And why not? We want the people to smell the roses. <laughs> that did it. I can't stand this any longer. Every week, the same thing. Oh, now, wait a minute, and Costello. And he gets money for it. What are you going to do? Huh? What are you going to do? What am I going to do? Yeah. Norman, this studio wasn't big enough for the two of us. Now, here, you take this gun and I'll take this gun. And we'll shoot at each other until one of us is dead. Okay. You want to bet a quarter I win? Bet a quarter. What for? I just thought you might want to make it exciting. Look, Roy, why don't you go over to the Raleigh cigarette program and have your head moisturized? Wait a minute. <laughs> now, get out of here. <laughs> hey, Adam, why don't you get that guy a job and keep him out of here? 
He just comes in for laughs. He's got a job. He's yeah. a salesman. Are you kidding? That guy couldn't sell anything. Right now, he's working in the drugstore, and they're having a one-cent sale. What's he selling? Pennies. Pennies? <laughs> <laughs> Cucamonga, 32. Pomona, 31. San Fernando, above 32. Riverside, 28. Wait a minute, Costello. What are you doing? I figured as long as I ain't getting any laughs, I just might as well read the frost warnings. <laughs> that's, no, that's no attitude to take. After all, Costello, this is Christmas time. Don't you feel the spirit of Christmas? Yes, I guess you're right, Abbott. I feel like helping everybody. I've got nothing but good in my heart. See that old man over there? The one with the beard and the patches on his pants? Yes. I'll show you I got the spirit of Christmas. I'm going over there and help that old man out. That's the spirit, Costello. Hiya, buddy. Could I talk to you for a minute? Oh, what do you want? Well, I, 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 I don't want to be forward. And this being Christmas, you know, I'm Lou Costello, the actor. I thought that maybe you'd uh, sort of... Well, well, here's a dime. Get lost. <laughs> Santa Paula, 32. Ventura, 29. <laughs> and a 30. Hello, boys. Hey, look, Costello, it's our secretary, Viola Vaughn. Hey. Uh, I called you last night, Viola, and you weren't home. No, I was over at Costello's house practicing love scenes with him. You were practicing love scenes with Costello? Uh-huh. He's short. He's so short. He he doesn't even come up to your shoulders. How can he? How can you make love to you? Well, I stand him on a box, put my arms around him tight, kick the box out from under him, and I've got him trapped. <laughs> oh, hi, twenty-nine, tipped in above thirty-two. The hollow thirty-one. Well, I'll leave you two. Cheerio, so long, Pip Pip and Hetty Lamar. Pip Pip. Pip-Pip and Hedy Lamar. Yeah, that's three pips. <laughs> hey, where, where are you going, Costello? I gotta go home now and take care of my brother Pat. You know, he's in that awkward age, you know. Awkward age? Yeah, he's too young to leave home alone and too old to trust with babysitters. <laughs> <laughs> why, why waste your time with your brother Pat? Why don't you take Viola to the movies? Oh, no. I'm not gonna go to the movies with Costello after what happened the last time. What happened? Viola and I were holding hands, but we had to let go because we were tripping too many people. You were tripping people? Yeah, she was sitting across the aisle from me. <laughs> Now, do you see why I won't go to the movies with him? You don't have to go with me, Viola. I can get plenty of girls. Only tonight, coming down here, Ann Sheridan says, Hiya, Lou. Uh, when did you ever meet Ann Sheridan? I've seen her so many times on a screen, she thinks she knows me. <laughs> are you kidding? You don't, you don't know anybody in pictures. I don't, eh? Here comes Alan Ladd. I'll show you how, who my pals are. Hi, Alan. Hi, Mac. Mac. <laughs> Mac. Hmm. I thought he was your pal. Ah, he's a little Why did he call you Mac? He's a little nearsighted. He thought I was Fred McMurray. <laughs> well, so long, Costello. And remember, <laughs> if you want to, you can come over to my house tonight. Oh, well, yeah. Costello, that was nice of Viola to invite you over for dinner. Yes, but I ain't gonna go to her house anymore for dinner. She's too wishy-washy. Wishy-washy? Yes, every time we get through with dinner, she always says, I wishy you'd washy the dishes. Get her out of here! <laughs> Santa Paula, 32. Yeah, I hate to break it up, man, but it's time to change the subject for just about 60 seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, here's our new singer, Hal Winters. Let's give Hal a nice big hand. A nice Hal big Winters. hand for Hal Winters. <laughs> they 
possibility in view, that possibility of maybe seeing you, come rain, come shine, I meet you and to me the day is fine, then I speak your name and that pounding becomes the ocean's roar, a thousand drums. Can't you see it's love? Can there be any doubt? When there it is, day in, day out. Then I speak your name, and that pounding becomes the ocean's roar, a thousand drums. When there it is Day in, day out Costello, put what? down that Put down that water pitcher Put down Put down that water pitcher What are you doing? I'm putting it down What are you doing? Well, I'm drinking water. Doctor told me to drink water now before I eat, and I don't like it. Why not? I've been drinking for 20 minutes. If I take another swallow, I'll bust. <laughs> what doctor did you go to? My cousin. My cousin, he's a doctor. Dr. Vincent Varello. Is he a good doctor? Good. He's the greatest doctor in Cucamonga. The most skillful doctor in Cucamonga. There's no better doctor in Cucamonga. What makes you so sure? He's the only doctor in Cucamonga. <laughs> I mean, why do you go all the way to Cucamonga? There's uh, a doctor right in your block. Yeah, but he's a baby doctor. I ain't got no confidence in him. Why not? Very few babies make good doctors. <laughs> Forget about it. Have you heard any more from our sponsors about uh, how they like our, your Sam Shovel detective stories? Indeed I have. Here's a letter from one of them that came this morning. I'll read it. Dear Luba Costello, since I heard you were going to continue your Sam Shovel detective series, I have decided to take the old picture off our bottles and replace it with your picture. For as long as you do your Sam Shovel series, Every bottle of our product will have your picture on the label. What pro product do they make? Iodine. I, <laughs> I thought so. What is your Sam Shovel detective mystery for tonight, Gus? One of my minor cases, Abbott. I call it the case of the babysitter who was fired because he ne neglected his work or it was time for a change. <laughs> well, let's get on with the case. <laughs> Now, the makers of Pismo Cocoa, the cocoa that won't keep you awake unless you drink it, <laughs> present your favorite radio mystery, Sam Shovel, Private Detective. But first, a word about our product. Friends, when you drink cocoa before you go to bed, do you toss and turn? Try a cup of Pismo Cocoa tonight. No more tossing, no more turning. You'll just lie there, dead. <laughs> Pismo Coco comes in the regular style for those who make it in a pot. It also comes vacuum-packed for those who make it in a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> drink Pismo Coco and know, know when you drink Pismo Coco what a good cup tastes like. <laughs> hey, compared to the cocoa, the cup will taste wonderful. <laughs> and now let's listen to what people all over the country are saying about Pismo Coco. That's Coco. That's Coco. That's Coco. That's Coco. <laughs> Friends, we're proud of Pismo Coco. Remember this, during the war, Pismo Coco was chosen by our army as the Coco they served overseas. They served it to the Japs. <laughs> and now Pismo Coco brings you the further adventures of Sam Shovel, Private Detective. <laughs> Yes, 
Yes, I'm Sam Shovel. Sam Shovel, private detective. I've had a tough day. I'm sitting here in my little office dozing. I'm sleepy. Suddenly I see a Dunhill, a K. Woody, a corn cob, a briar. I'm having pipe dreams. <laughs> the telephone company was here this morning and put in a phone. I look at my new phone number, Elephant 6688. Hmm. Must be on a trunk line. <laughs> I just finished listening to my favorite radio giveaway show. It's the only real giveaway show on the air. If you guess the answer, they give away the show. <laughs> I see the mailman's shadow on the window of my office door. He's bringing my mail. <laughs> he delivers the mail the hard way. The hard way. He crawls through the mail slot and drags the mail in after him. I notice my new map has arrived in the mail. It's got the boundaries of all the states marked on it. I study the map. There's the Ohio State line. There's the Indiana line. There's... You all? That must be the Mason-Dixon line. <laughs> I love the South. I'll never forget how I trailed Shotgun Jake through the South. He thought he was a smart guy, but I fixed his wagon. I grabbed him in Atlanta and fixed his wagon. In Chattanooga, I fixed his wagon. In Birmingham, I fixed his wagon. I made a lot of money on that case. He gave me $5 every time I fixed his wagon. <laughs> Here's a letter from a crook in Switzerland. He's imprisoned at the Yodel Yodel. That's Swiss for Sing Sing. <laughs> I decide to read the rest of my mail. Here's a letter I don't understand. Dear Sam Shovel, we're sick of you but to know our business. If the Varela gang don't kill you, we'll kill you. Sign the Mary gang. P.S. If you're already dead, please disregard this note. <laughs> that sounds like a threatening letter. I better make sure I'm armed. I open the drawer of my desk to check on my gun. <laughs> it's a Colt. <laughs> Here's a postcard for my bookmaker. He wants me to send him a dollar for a football pool. I don't think I'll do it. It's a waste of time building a pool for a football. <laughs> It's about time for my pal, Lieutenant Abbott of the Homicide Squad, to show up. Abbott is a fine cop. Abbott, the chief wants to put him on the headquarters squad. No wonder. Abbott is the only cop on the force that's got a head the size of a quarter. <laughs> I've hung out with Lieutenant Abbott so much we've become known as sidekicks. It's not because we're so friendly. It's just that every time we meet, we kick each other in the side. <laughs> Suddenly, I hear footsteps outside my door. Hello, Sam Shovel. Glad you showed up, Lieutenant Abbott. How about paying me the five dollars you owe me? When April showers, they come my way. Every time I ask for money, he gives me a song and dance. <laughs> Where have you been, Lieutenant Abbott? I just arrested a guy for changing a tire. You can't arrest a man for changing a tire. From my car to his. Car? <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Abbott also changed that joke. From my punchline to his punchline. Sam, this office is filthy. Why don't you get some cleaning equipment? I've Clean got, up the dirt. I've got plenty of cleaning equipment. I've got vacuum cleaners, mops, brooms, and scrubbing brushes. Why don't you use them? Can't find them. They're under the dirt. <laughs> You're a disgrace to the detective business. What an office. It's ankle deep in dirt. Why don't you open a window? The only window in the place is in my kitchenette. Well, open it. What, and let the sun come in and kill my mushroom bed? <laughs> As I said this, I heard a creepy sound in the hall outside. I turned and looked. Lieutenant Abbott and I said, quick, somebody's coming. Hide behind that marble slab. A slab. Sam. <laughs> Sam, you were right. There's someone at the door. The door slowly opened. Get it open while I'm still young enough to read the next line. <laughs> Standing in the doorway was the most gorgeous girl I've ever seen. She spoke. Oh, Monsieur Sam Chauvel, I have heard that you are a great detective, no? That I am. I looked at this lovely creature. She was wearing a low-cut evening gown. Sam Chauvel, will you help me out? Lady, don't you think you're out far enough already? <laughs> Sam Chauvel, who is your so charming friend? This is Lieutenant Abbott of the Homicide Squad. Ah, the famous brave Lieutenant Abbott. Lieutenant, I am in great danger. You can help me, n'est-ce pas? 
Mmh. Mais oui, mademoiselle. Oh, chérie, que vous êtes le plus bel homme du monde. Oh, I don't think I could do that. <laughs> oh, mais je crois que vous êtes un méchant garçon. I couldn't do that. Oh, mais vous n'avez pas besoin d'être si insolente avec moi. Mm -mm, I couldn't do that. What she's saying, Abbott, maybe I could. <laughs> Chevel, you are so brave. The terrible Count Boris is after me. Tell me, what would you do if you were in my shoes? I'd probably fall flat on my puss. <laughs> Countess, you shouldn't drag Sam Shovel into this case. Here we go again. Count Boris is a vicious man. He might kill Sam. Besides, you have no money to pay the fee. Oh, it is true I have no money, but Sam, I can pay you with kisses. Kisses are not legal tender. They may not be legal, but I'll bet they're tender. <laughs> Sam, you are so wonderful. I'm going to give you a kiss that will melt your heart. <laughs> Sam. Sam, say something. Does anybody want to buy 10 cents worth of liquid hot? <laughs> Boris, he's looking for me. He is always seeking me. For five years, I've been hiding from him. Quick, Sam, where can I hide? Here, hide under the desk. Where is she? Where is she? I know she's here. I've been looking for her for five years. Aha! There you are under the desk, huh? Come out, Countess Borden. I have found you, and you know what that means. What are you going to do to her, Count Boris? Nothing. Well, now it's my turn to hide. She's got to find me. <laughs> Get him out of here, will you? Adam Costello will have the last word as usual. But before they go, we'd like you to ponder this. say good night, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to say that the part of Sam Shovel in tonight's show was played by Luke Costello. And I, Bud Abbott, do not necessarily agree with anything he says. <laughs> Thank you, Abbott. And I want to say that the part of Lieutenant Abbott of the Homicide Squad is played by Bud Abbott. And if there was any resemblance between Abbott and any living person, there would be better off dead. <laughs> Thank you. And now let's give a bow to our orchestra leader, Matty Malnick, and to our singer, Hal Winters. And I'd like to give credit to our writing staff, which is headed by Lee Foreman with Paul Collin, Pat Costello, Martin Ragway, and Leonard Stern. And let's not forget our capable producer, Charles Vander. And let's not forget to say good night. Good night, folks. Good night to everybody in Patterson. Good night. Good night. Yeah. Good night. Listen each Thursday night at this time for another great Abbott and Costello show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood. Be sure to stay tuned for the outstanding entertainment which follows throughout the evening on this ABC station.